Yes, life is good, and uh, I could not find my little segment, so you got more of that goofy song, maybe, than you wanted. So I'd go back to the, the actual video, the Hickok 45 song, by the way, it's called, by Steve Lee. All right, so I don't know what's going on. I cut out a small segment just for the short part for the introduction, posted about three months ago. So I always go back three months, scroll down through the video. It's not there. It's not there. Hmm. Big media wouldn't be messing with me, would they? <laughs> yeah, they tend to do that, don't they? A lot of that in the news uh, this week. Uh, wow. They sort of can do what they want, but they, uh, eh, we could discuss that for hours, right? And you probably have. Uh, companies that can make their own choices, but everybody uses them. It was that way with the telephone company, we used to call it, you know, back in, well, the early days up into my, I don't know, when, how old I was when the telephone company got broken up, Bell Telephone basically got broken up into uh, pieces because of that, uh, monopolizing all the communications and everything. And, uh, you know, so I, I could argue it both ways. I'm, you know, I, I lean on the side of freedom, even if it's messy, even if it doesn't please me, even if it works against me to some extent, uh, just because of the way the chips fall, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'd rather suffer through things that are inconvenient because of uh, freedom, because of people having more freedom then I would uh, want to suffer through more government control in our lives. You know? So I'd lean on that side of things, but we're, it, it's, it's a new thing in the world, in the universe, you know, unless Facebook or something like it is out there on another planet somewhere. But wow, I mean, how many, how many, uh, how many times can somebody invent something that everybody flocks to? And the nature of it is that everybody wants to and kind of needs to use it. I mean, like the telephone system uh, was. You know, I mean, I think about it, that started out with, with uh, you know, well, obviously Alexander Bell, Graham Bell, and different things. Uh, my history lesson, but and as more people, yeah, you know, it was kind of a cool thing to have a telephone. Wow, nobody thought about it ever being a big giant monopoly and that everybody having one in their house and their pockets or everything but uh, at the time but things just evolve it's like i remember facebook it was something that just college kids used and uh i remember setting up an account one time and i i because it was beginning to creep out it, it was open to anybody really and i felt kind of weird because it was a college student platform and I thought okay this is a little creepy am I setting up an account on a college student platform you know but I don't know how old John was at the time he was probably too young but I I got the, the feeling uh and learned that no no it's it's it, everybody's using it now or anybody wants to and then before you know it everybody is using it and uh and of course Twitter which I really don't use but uh, apparently a lot of people do I, I have things posted automatically like I've said but because uh, some of you do use it, you know, and you can get notified of a video if I put it on Facebook, which I don't always do. But uh, that's the thing about it, too. I think we have uh, about almost three quarters of a million followers on Facebook. But if I post something, 
it doesn't go to even half of them. Uh, so it's weird. It's weird. Uh, I do post sometimes as a reminder about videos, and sometimes I don't. I probably should do it every time, regardless. Okay. Uh, and, I, and I'll see comments on there. Sometimes someone will write the if I see the comments. So wow, it's been a while since you posted. <laughs> well, no, we post two or three times, four times a week. It's just that occasionally I'll put a reminder over on Facebook and link to the video or something. You know, so uh, you can't get to everybody. Write that down. Shakespeare said it. You can't get to everybody. So what are we doing? What am I doing? Yakking about things I wasn't not even going to yak about. And I haven't talked about the firearms or anything yet. But anyway, welcome to Tennessee, the home of Alvin York, Jeff Quinn, Johnny K. All kinds of people have lived here. Great place. And it's getting prettier and prettier as the weeks go by. Again, one of the things I like about the weekly uh, update, catching up with you every week, and uh, is it's current, pretty current, right? So you're seeing me, uh, you know, within hours of uh, posting or, or doing this and the trees and the conditions and, you know, whatever's going on. And uh, if it uh, gives me a chance to, to, uh, I don't talk about something current or update you on something. Uh, so hopefully uh, a lot of you, a lot of you are watching. So anyway, uh, here I am. And it's it's nice and it's good to be back with you i enjoy these little chats we have you all are rather quiet but uh, not when the comments start you chime in right and uh that's great so i'm shooting an ak you probably saw i brought it out to shoot it and uh i've got another ruger out, out here we did a video with this week and i was gonna get i was getting ready to box it up i'm i'm ready to put it in a box and get the shipping label and everything ready got to take the scope off of it and ship it back. I thought I'd shoot a couple of times today before I clean it uh, one last time, put it in the box. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what, what we're doing. Uh, and fu it's funny, today uh, we just went to uh, uh, check my post office box and I guess what was in the mail? Happiness is being a gun nut, isn't it? You get a, uh, an AK magazine <laughs> in the mail <laughs> that you've ordered. Yeah, it makes going to the mail uh, box fun. Right, uh, so because you never know what might come. Well, I do know. I ordered them, bought them, and uh, so here I am. Uh, well, let me show you this thing. I was shooting. Okay, I have a confession. Uh, again, you remember the AKS 762 that John did a video on recently, and uh, like he mentioned there how much I liked it. Well, I got this other AK coming. I'd like a better stock on it. A uh, folding stock that's long enough native length uh, nato link native link <laughs> native nato length and quality and you know, it's hard to get in and i loved his rifle and he he went on gunbroker one day in fact we were in tulsa sitting out there in the desert having a cigar he goes on his phone on gunbroker and uh he's oh my gosh here's another one like he bought so anyway I uh, took a look and I thought, well, yeah, well, that's one way to get the stock I want or the gun I want. And uh, I ended up with it, and here it is. And uh, it wasn't cheap, but I'll tell you, it's a nice firearm. Yeah, look at that video, the <laughs> recent one John did on his AKS 762, because it's exactly like this one. Same gun, same cool stock. Uh, just a, a, a great uh, AK. And again, I know we a lot of us have a mental block against China. It's, it's funny, uh, there have been a, a few comments on his video. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't buy anything from China, do they do this and all that kind of thing. Uh, well, you know, these were made in the 80s over there. They were imported in the 80s, uh, probably by 89, I guess, all that were imported because the import ban took place. So, whatever China was, however mad you were at China uh, in 88, 89, maybe 90, uh, 1990, 1989, then uh, I guess you could be mad because somebody bought this back then. <laughs> I don't know. But it's been a while. Someone probably paid, uh, who knows, 300 bucks, 400 for one of these back then, you know, and uh, 
So they've changed hands a lot, and you know, a lot of Americans have made profits and enjoyed them and all that kind of thing. So it's not exactly like calling up your your, your gun dealer and say, hey, I'd like, would you order me one of these from China, from Beijing, and uh, you know, I'll send a check. <laughs> so, and then the, the thing that I didn't know too, was I bought one of these, and, and in fact, I was, uh, watching uh, Ian, Forgotten Weapons, he posted a video just yesterday, I think, popped up on, uh, on, on these. It was an underfolder, but the AKS, you know, 762, and talked a little bit more about it, and, and, uh, which I kind of have known since then, because I've been studying them more. So I know a, a lot of what he was talking about already, but one thing he mentioned that made sense to me, well, everything he says makes sense, right? But he, he, he talked about how an, the 80, late 80s, the first ones that they imported, exported uh, to this country were uh, 556. And because that's what we Americans knew about the most and had the ammo, and it wasn't much 762 ammo maybe available and all that. And, and so the first ones were 556, and then later uh, they were exporting ammo and the 762s, you know, like this one and, and everything. And I think, yeah, bingo, because it, back then, I didn't know much about AKs. I don't know if anybody really, not many people did in the 80s, because you just didn't see them. You know, it's a different world in the 80s, believe it or not. Uh, you go into a gun shop, there wouldn't be an AK there. It may not be an AR, but there wouldn't be an AK probably, you know, 85, 83, 70s, you know. Uh, I think I told you all once before, I never even saw uh, a 762 by 39 round for a long time. I read about them and somebody I think had one in his pocket or something in a gun shop somewhere and, and I saw that and I thought, wow, that is a neat little round like that, you know, and it would be cool to have an AK sometime or something to shoot that. And it's one of the reasons I, I was drawn to the SKS even. But, so that made sense because I can't remember the exact year. It was shortly after I moved out here and bought this place, like 86, 7, 8, 8, 88, probably 88, I don't know, 87. I bought one in 556. Five, and I've been thinking through the years that I just did that because cheaper to shoot and I'd have ammo or something. Uh, but it was probably also because there still was not uh, 762 by 39 ammo on the shelves. That's probably why I got one in an AK. And so I kind of compromised and got 556 five, and had it for I don't know, a year or two. And I, I never really liked the idea of it because it's, I don't know, just chambered in 556 five, didn't seem right. Uh, it was okay. And so I'm still dealing with the short stocks, the Warsaw Link stocks. And I don't know, a couple of years later, I bought the same gun, I guess, in uh, 762, but it, it may be in the same gun without the folding stock. You know, I just didn't know. I don't remember the model name on it exactly. It was a Chinese AK, and all I remember, and the stock was too short. And I didn't have any other AKs. I probably hadn't even held anybody else's AK to compare it with, so I couldn't have told you about the quality versus others. I just, I don't know, there's an AK. And uh, so I had one in, in 762 there. and. Uh, I had all, John laughed at me, I remember. Now, he was born then, he was young. So I probably had that into the 90s. And I had all kinds of things added to that stock, con contraptions, duct taped on there and everything else so I could shoot it. And, you know, those little stocks are kind of small anyway, so it, it just didn't work. I didn't even had a, a wad of socks or something. I'd taped up and I created a, uh, an extender for it. Because I wanted to like it. I wanted to be able to shoot it and enjoy it. And it was really difficult to do. So anyway, uh, fast forward uh, several years, I sold that for that reason. Somewhere traded it, but fast forward, and when was it, I don't know, like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you, know, you started seeing uh, furniture kits for these more NATO linked uh, stocks and things, adjustable stocks and, and all that sort of thing. And, and so I uh, revisited the AK and said, whoa, because I picked up a couple, shouldered them somewhere, and said, oh, a real gun, you know? And so that's why I bought a washer and put an aftermarket stock on it, and weird, adjustable long thing. It didn't look much like an AK. In fact, we, I think that video, one of the early videos we did was, I don't know what we called it, rapid fire or something, AK rapid fire or something. I shot up a barrel or drum. That was the gun I had, and it had that long stock, it's kind of weird. 
But uh, anyway, things have changed. And so now you can get, but what I like about these and John's is that it's, it's the classic AK and you don't have to get a different stock, like some kind of polymer stock on it to, to ruin it, the ambiance. And it's long enough and it's a quality folding stock. It's just amazing. You know, so anyway, I'm glad to have it. And then these things are well made. Who knew that China would make some of the best, if not the best, AKMs, AK-47s, whatever, uh, that have been made? Who knew? You know, it, it, it doesn't compute, I realize. Uh, it, and a lot of people probably think we're just rationalizing when we say that. <laughs> but look at anything anybody talks about. I think Ian even mentions the quality of these things in, in that video. But they're just well made. Uh, they're, you'll see statements online by people say they're absolutely the best ever made. You know, they used a little thicker receiver, as John pointed out in, the, in that video. Let me take, kind of shoot it again. Okay. How about some paper here? How about a gong? <laughs> How about a red plate? All right. How about a two liter? How about not? There's the old AK for you. You better count your rounds, right? They generally don't hold the mat, the bolt back. All right, so that's pretty cool. Glad to have that. Also brought out the uh, uh, Ruger number one that uh, I think I posted a picture of this on Instagram. And uh, so I put my scope on it because it doesn't didn't come with a scope, of course, just the ring. So uh, this goes back to Bud's for their e-gunner. Uh, nice rifle, 450 Bushmaster. So I'll take a couple shots with that too. And uh, what else? What else uh, was I going to talk about? Yeah, I, we've been shooting a lot of different things this week. <laughs> I was going to talk about how, again, how lucky I, I am and fortunate and how uh, I, I appreciate it and how I know I'm lucky and how I thank you all for that uh, because this week been shooting this beautiful single shot rifle, a Hawken muzzle loader traditions i'm shipping it back to you haven't seen it uh, but it's, it's just a hawking uh rifle you know 50 caliber like a lot of you used to hunt deer with and that kind of thing so uh, it's going back for your gunner as well we did a video on it uh, yesterday so we'll get that up sometime in the next few years right but uh anyway the variety again is what is so cool because I enjoy almost all firearms and uh, you know, single shot modern gun like this, a modern cartridge, 450 Bushmaster, uh, shot uh, this week several times, and then uh, a muzzle loader, 50 caliber, all the mess, you know, and the round balls and black powder, real black powder, and then uh, this uh, old AK 47. <laughs> so, uh, Variety is the spice of life. What else did I shoot? Anything else in that uh, I'm not thinking about? Uh, let me make a note of that, I guess. I don't uh, seem like there. Oh, yeah, John's Uzi. That's right. He had it out. We've been doing some pumpkin killing this week. You've seen the pumpkin carving, I hope. Okay, we just posted it about a week ago. So uh, we're doing pumpkin killing. You'll be seeing that probably later this week. Okay, we're about finished with it, got a little bit to do, and uh, we had to get the Uzi out for uh, for that, of course, right? John's Uzi, and uh, we, if we have access to a fully auto loader, we like to, you know, include that in the pumpkin kills, you know, just for, <laughs> for effect. So let me uh, put a round in this thing and shoot it. But we've been having a lot of fun with pumpkins, and you notice I brought out the... Uh, can you see it there? Yeah, you can sort of see it. Uh, and you should recognize it if you've seen the pumpkin carving this year, because that's him. I, uh, they don't last long, as you know, once you carve them, and they're outside in the weather and everything. I set him down in a trash can, put the lid on. I thought, well, if this thing will survive, I'll, uh, I'll drag him out for maybe a Sunday shoot around or something. And, uh, and he sort of survived, he's starting to get a little weird. And I thought, well, might as well take a shot at him. Okay, we'll finish him off today. So, what did I do that with? Uh, oh, yeah, the uh, M17, SIG M17, nice. 
Let's see, I don't think I can get that in the AK. Let's see if it'll go in this. Let's see if the scope is still on. All right. 450 Bushmaster. If you're not familiar with it, ballistically, it's about uh, like a 4570, 300 grain bullet in that kind of category. And there's AR-15s chambered in it. I don't know if any of them are reliable or, or not yet. <laughs> and part of its claim to fame is it's uh, legal in a lot of states uh, that do not allow like necked cartridges. They just allow maybe a shotgun, slugs, and that sort of thing. All right, let's, uh, let's see if the scope is still on here. If I haven't knocked it off. No rapid fire with this, single shot. If you're not familiar with a Ruger number one, you should have seen our video on the, uh, uh, what was it, 375 H&H. &H. That's the only uh, Ruger number one we've done. Uh, yeah, well, let's do a two liter. Red one. Yeah. <laughs> that ought to blast it. It's got a muzzle brake on there, as you can see. So it's pretty nice, got a little three and a half by 10 uh, scope. That's my scope. And uh, yeah, good little hunter. That's the nice thing uh, about so many firearms. You might not want to take that one to war, of course, beat nothing. But uh, you know, for hunting, plinking, rapid fire is usually not needed, not essential, right? Uh, even follow-up shots, quick follow-up shots and hunting is, is usually not an issue. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't hurt maybe, but uh, so there's a lot of uses for firearms like that. Uh, and of course we know there are a lot of uses for firearms like, like this. I said, now that was a, one of the magazines that came today. I ordered, they're Chinese. I wanted to keep it all Chinese, right? And, uh, and steel mags, I just, I don't know. And one like this, I just uh, hate to put uh, a modern polymer mag in it. I'll do it, you know, of course, uh, like my arsenal. So this is the one that came with it, and uh, it seems to work. AKs tend to work. You notice that? Now, is that a thing of beauty or what? All right. The, uh, the Chinese, with their stamped AKs, they used uh, like a... a 1.5 millimeter uh, metal instead of one millimeter like everybody else used. And they're just known for being well made. Their barrels are a little heavier. I read that they're, uh, they're inserted into the trunnion uh, more tightly than others. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's just really weird uh, to, to look at them and talk about them. You take them apart and look at them. And I've gone through a few different AKs now and uh they really are quality this uh stock is real quality and uh, the wood is even very nice the grip is very nice it's got just a little more meat to it feels good to me and uh, i don't know who knew <laughs> who knew to go to china for quality who knew oh, let's let's take out the pumpkin okay let me, yeah you can hear me. All right. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> and put one on the gong for good measure. Yeah, who'd have thunk it? Uh, well, if you really want quality, like that's not a line that a lot of people have used, have uttered, right? Uh, if you're really looking for quality fill in the blank, uh, you need to go to China or you know, buy, a, buy one made in China. Yeah, I mean, that's not a common sentence, right? So that's what makes it so unusual. I'm trying to think of an analogy, but you know, anyway, uh, it, it's true. Yeah. I tell you what, I'll shoot this a while. Uh, I may do a video comparing this with, dare I say it, my Arsenal Sam 7 SF. You're familiar with that one with a nice folding stock. 
uh, right now and in, after firing John's even, uh, if I'd encountered one of these and bought it, owned it somehow, sold it, whatever, uh, I would never have gotten, I would never have been as impressed with the Sam 7 when I picked it up in a shop, you know, opened up the stock and, oh, that feels good and everything. I mean, boy, I just had to have one of those because uh, this is it. This is the same and it's in a more of a classic format. And I don't know, uh, there may be some people that would say this is a better made AK. Can you believe that? So that's a good topic for discussion. You know, uh, Chinese AK versus Arsenal AK, <laughs> which is better. Uh, of course, how you define better. But uh, in some ways, you know, maybe this one's better. In some ways, maybe Arsenal is better. But uh, there's so many cheap uh, folding stocks, too. That's another thing. And that's one of the things that impressed me so much with the Galil I used to own, the 308. Uh, the stock was incredible and tight, you know, folding stock, metal stock. And as, as you know, if you've ever messed with one of those. And uh, on the Sam 7, locks in tight. It's, it's just very much like this one. Locks in tight, plenty sturdy, and long enough. Gives you a good length of pull and a feel in your shoulder. And so just really impressive. And that's the way this one is. You know, so there's so many wire stocks on some of these, uh, these, these, uh, these foreign, these firearms, these uh, AKs and different things. The underfolders have never impressed me. And some of the side folders, you know, look like something I put together with some wire in my barn, you know, and uh, uh, so that's the thing, you know, get with this. Uh, anyway, if you don't believe me, which you probably never believe me, right? You know, read up on them. The Chinese AK, it's the AKS 762. And uh, they're, they're just quality machines. Hard to believe, isn't it? Uh, so I'm real happy with that. And I apologize. Uh, I've, I've confessed to my addiction many times. And uh, it's just, you know, what do you do? You know, uh, I'm still looking for a 12-step program. And uh, for that, you know, I just haven't found one. If you're familiar with one, let me know. No, wait a minute. I don't think I want to go to a 12-step program to get over my firearms addiction. Those are for people who really actually are motivated and want to get over some sort of addiction, right? I'm not motivated, so uh, forget what I said, okay? Yeah, I will never be motivated to get over that addiction. Uh, so anyway, fun. You know, one thing about the AKs, I understand that there's a mental block against them. I think a lot of people had those mental blocks back in the 70s and 80s on an AK when you saw it. You think, oh, a commie, commie rifle or something. And if you fought in Vietnam, you know, especially, you may have been fired at with a firearm like that or the Type 56, you know. Uh, and uh, so you, you never want to own one. I understand. Uh, I, I understand. I, there are people, I say I understand, as long as you're not one of those, those, those same people that have never been in the military ever in their life, they have no history with a Mauser rifle or anything like that, but they just, they, you see a comment occasionally on video where they just want to faint, they think you're just insane that you would own one of those that was used against our soldiers or some firearm that might have been used to execute somebody or whatever it might be. Uh, I kind of understand that a little bit if you're really emotional sort of person, but uh, I guess I'm able to separate that. It's just a piece of iron, you know. The anti-gunners, uh, that's their tact. Just remember, that's their approach. You know, they, the gun is, is responsible for all of it. We just get rid of these guns, they're evil. So we've got to be careful about assigning too much evil, you know, to any firearm. But then again, I, again, if you were in Vietnam and you know, your buddies were killed by guns like that. It's got to have an emotional uh, toll on you, whether it's rational or not, right? That's what it kind of comes down to. If you've had a bad experience with something, it's, it's just harder to be uh, rational and have common sense guide you, right? Just like if you you had a child fall off a horse and and break her back or something or hurt really, really badly, permanently paralyzed, you know, fell off a horse. Uh, you're just gonna have a different feeling about horses, right? You're just like, you may hate horses and we understand that. It's just, it's just the way it is. It's, it's like if you had a child uh, or somebody, a friend killed in a car wreck or, or shot, 
You know, it just, it changes you. Uh, it's an emotional reaction that we understand, you know, but it's, it's still just, it's an emotional reaction. So how do I get off of an AK, right? A lot of myths around about AKs. Also, we appreciate Battle Stall. I've used a lot of it this week. I just cleaned the uh, traditions of uh, Hawking I was telling you about, and uh, <laughs> you're not using a lot of them. And, and on the AK yesterday, I cleaned it a day or two ago now after I tried it out to make sure it worked. And I'm gonna use it on this number one here a little bit. And we appreciate Talon Grips. They make the best water jugs on the planet. And the best, <laughs> make some good grip, really good grips. So there's a lot of choices, but they make some really nice ones. They feel good. Got one in my pocket, sure do. Uh, let, me, let me show you. Let's see, did I have this one last week? I might have had a different one last week. This is the Hellcat. <laughs> I, uh, I tell you, I, I switch around a little bit, uh, but I, it's always the same feel. You know, I don't, I don't, as I've said before, I don't think it's wise. I don't think anybody would advise you, people with experience, to switch a lot. And definitely don't switch back and forth maybe uh, regularly between something that, that has a thumb safety and something that doesn't, and some different manual of arms. That's not wise, I think. Uh, this is my opinion, but uh, you know, pull and shoot. If you're just going pull and shoot, uh, a little different. Yeah. So uh, same holster. You know, just find the trigger sights and, and shoot. So yeah, we really appreciate everybody that helps us along with this project. Uh, we we uh, we're so fortunate. And uh, again, y'all made it possible. And when I. When I thank our uh, our sponsors, people that help us, I am so sincere. And when I thank you guys, that I am uh, and gals, of course, I am uh, equally and uh, well sincere about it because it's why we're here, why we're able to do this, and I'm able to shoot all these different firearms in one week. Uh, you know, I've told the story about how it's like a, it's a wonderful life, Jimmy Stewart. You know the movie. Uh, some characters up there, you know, whatever, 15 years ago, looked down on me and said, look at that poor schmo, God. He goes into a building with middle schoolers every day, spends an entire day there, long day, with 11, 12, 13, 14 year olds all day long. And he has some time to enjoy shooting. He's a shooting a nut, he loves to shoot. Why don't we do something for him? He's been doing this for decades. Uh, let's just, Let's just uh, let him take a break from that and let him get paid to, to shoot, right? And, and experiment with firearms. Let's just do that for that poor, poor schmo, okay? So that's sort of what happened. And I appreciate whoever that was up there that did that, right? Uh, but mostly because of you all. So what else was I gonna blab about before I shoot again? Uh, oh yeah, John's gonna be again at the Brickyard Barbecue in Knoxville, October the 18th seven o'clock so check him out you might find something to laugh about if you live around there i don't know whether i'll be there or not uh have you been enjoying uh the uh supreme court hearings this week <laughs> i tell you it's been interesting and uh i i advise you i i have learned a lot it's been a good i haven't seen it all but i've seen some of it and it has been a good civics lesson I'm reminded about how little probably so, so many people know about the law and, and civics and how our government works and all that. We spend so much time criticizing them and thinking of all of them as just total fools, total arrogant idiots for even wanting to be in Congress or president or anything. And, and, and of course, that's the easy route, right? I do it too. It's the easy route when we don't know something about something very much to just be really negative all the time about it it makes us seem so wise and like we know better it's like i talked about having that contrarian opinion all the time about something or you're the one i'm the one who sees the conspiracy no one else sees it it makes me feel a lot smarter and appear maybe appear smarter to some people because i i take the the minority view on everything and by minority i mean the uh the unusual view that hardly anybody else takes or you know sees that conspiracy uh, and sometimes that's the right view but uh so it's easy to just 
you know, shuck it all off. It, it, people are all idiots. They're in for themselves. You can't trust any of them. And they're all idiots and that kind of thing. But I tell you, if you watch much of that, uh, there are some sharp people in the Senate. Okay? I'm not going to get into party politics. You have to decide that for yourself. But I was impressed with some. I will I say one guy. I didn't know what party he was with. I never heard of him. I, I'm ashamed to say it. Uh, Mike Lee from Utah. Wow, you folks, you've got a sharp fellow representing you. Okay? Now, I'm sure if you're a, he's a Republican, I think. If you're a Democrat, you probably don't think so, right? That's just the way the world works. You think he's an idiot. And the reverse would be true. But uh, if you're a Republican, if you're a Democrat, the Republicans would think he's an idiot, right? Man, that guy is sharp. Uh, so I, I didn't even know him. I've just been so impressed with him. This week. But there are some people there that really do uh, know the law and and know almost as much as the uh, the person they were, they were grilling. Uh, I was just very impressed with a few folks. I was, uh, but I was not impressed with a lot of them too. Uh, it, it just, you can't watch too much of it, can you? I was also impressed with just, or I wasn't impressed, but I learned some things about the Supreme Court from some of the questioning and, and from her answers, Barrett's answers and things like how the Supreme Court, how, how it's supposed to work. You know, I mean, I sort of knew that, but I was reminded of some things that I thought were uh, interesting about all that. And I hope you got to see some of that. Yeah, I, we all need more education in civics and how each level and each branch works. It's supposed to work uh, more about the constant, more reminders about the Constitution and how it is supposed to work. Uh, because you can't, partly because you can't trust a lot of the politicians, right? Whether they're smart or not, because they're going to spin things to make it look like the other side is crazy right? And it works both ways. So it really would be, gosh, oh, we, we, we used to have civics in school. I had a half a year, I think, in, in high school, freshman year, whenever it was. Uh, I don't know if that's even taught anymore. You know, I think a lot of people just grow up thinking anybody's a politician's an idiot. They're all wrong. Everybody's wrong. Everybody in authority is stupid. They're wrong. The cops and everybody, teachers, parents, nobody knows anything. They're all idiots. You know? And that gives that gives them or me a license to do whatever I want. Because everybody's an idiot, right? And I don't have to know anything about fit, about civics or how things work and what a great system you know we have in this country. Uh, what it, it just makes you appreciate the the genius of the founders more and more the more you learn about it. It really does. And it's a shame there's so many, gosh, shallow-minded little twits running around. Uh, you know, thinking they know everything. And uh, the, the reason a lot of people can do what they do, misbehave the way they do, uh, try to burn things down, whatever, the way they do, and and really almost go unmolested for doing it, you know, almost able to do whatever. It's because of this system. It's because they have protection. It's because this country is surrounded uh, and, well, it's, um, um, figuratively speaking, this country is surrounded by incredible armament and tough men and women with firearms protecting uh, us uh, and keeping track of what's going on around the world. That's why we're able, you know, this system is why so many people are able to try to burn down cities so they can burn down this system that's protecting them and making it possible for them to do that. Is that making any sense? No, I don't make a lot of sense usually, so that's okay. Can I, I'll just shoot something, okay? How about that? What should I shoot? What do you, you probably want to see this thing again. I mean, I really like this AK. I'd like to uh, shoot it again. Maybe I will. But I want to shoot this because I'm going to send this back. I can shoot the AK anytime. I can bring it out again. Uh, so I got my pretty nice Leopold 3 to 9 I bought uh, strictly to move around on rifles uh, that, uh, that you know, we take a look at. So I'd have one, a pretty nice one. All right, let's pop something over there. 450 Bushmaster, let's hit, uh, let's just hit the gong. I don't think it'll tear it up. <laughs> it'll definitely ring it, definitely ring it.
I bet you it'll knock that bowling pin off. You reckon? <laughs> That's Tennessee talk, you reckon? <laughs> oh, yeah. Pretty easy to see if it's clear and safe. Isn't it? Oh, man. Guns like that are neat. Single shots. You just uh, have to, well, you don't have to appreciate them. It's like muzzle loaders, but people who own them and shoot them. I tell you what, I, I wrote down something. A guy wrote, made a, a guy, I guess, a uh, comment. Uh, it was actually a few weeks ago. What did he say? I thought I copied it out here. Oh, yeah. He, he said something about how you like the Cimarron pistols or something and classic Western firearms. And uh, he said, I feel crazy at times because all the BS going on in the world today and the tools that most people are prepping to the gills. And should be. He said, <laughs> he said, I still play with single actions, lever guns more than anything there is. Uh, he said, there's just a peaceful bliss about these things you'd never know until you've handled one. There's a peaceful bliss about these things. And I thought when he said that, that's, that's, that's phrased well. Uh, because there is, a, I don't know about bliss, <laughs> but uh, you know, a single shot rifle, a lever gun, a revolver, uh, kind of falls under the category, I guess, of slower shooting firearms. You know, unlike this. I don't know if there's a peaceful bliss associated with one of these, other than that's an empty mag. I need to need to mag in there, don't huh? it? Just doesn't look right without the mag. Uh, that there's a peaceful bliss associated with this, but it's mostly just knowing you're well protected, right? The, Second Amendment and your house and everything is probably well protected. So there's a certain amount of peaceful bliss there, I guess. But what he's talking about, I think, is it's just uh, I don't have a revolver right here, but just a firearm like the muzzle loader I shot yesterday. The enjoyment of putting the powder in and everything you need to do to get it ready to shoot, put the cap on and fire it. And you know, I, I think in the whole video, probably fired it seven, ten times. And uh, with this, same thing, you just bring it out and you might just shoot it 20 times, but you load it and you know, there's time between shots and you think more about, I don't know, what you're doing. You, uh, you think more about the firearm and appreciate it and just enjoy shooting. Uh, not that you don't with something like this, AK, but uh, I, that's why I do comment pretty often about about folks that uh, maybe they're just into black rifles and polymer pistols nothing wrong with that but I, I hate for people to, to miss out on some of the other firearms they're just a lot of fun and uh, slows you down a little bit and you can just really savor the uh, uh, the experience you know shooting a fine firearm whether it's an old Colt single action or a Colt revolver Smith & Wesson revolver single or double action uh, single shot rifles all that kind of thing it's all a lot of fun and true firearms enthusiasts uh, I think appreciate that and they know what I'm talking about even if they don't own all of those yet because <laughs> I mean I've been through this a lot of times people getting into firearms and they might see a firearm I have it be a relative or whoever and they're kind of fascinated by a single shot rifle you know or something they just don't have it and they don't even have many guns but you can tell they really appreciate it and a muzzle loader, you know, whatever it might be. So, you know, on the other hand, as I've said, there's a, especially with an AK, there are people that just wouldn't be caught dead with one of these things. Uh, but there again, such a piece of history, world history, and incredibly reliable, a really uh, nice cartridge, pretty powerful, but comfortable to shoot. These things are a lot more accurate than that's one of the biggest myths out there. They're plenty accurate for most of most applications that you know, obviously have been used around the world by so many uh, militaries and still are. So uh, they're, they're, again, there's people with mental blocks against these sorts of firearms, just as there are uh, people with mental blocks against a muzzle loader or a, a revolver, whatever else it might be. So. Uh, don't be a gun bigot. Don't be narrow-minded. Don't uh, just uh, you know, stick to one type of uh, endeavor. And I'm going too long. We're still recording now. Yeah. 
All right, hadn't been shut off by big media yet. That's probably coming next, right? Well, anything else I wanted to mention that uh, you're dying to hear about? Yeah, probably not. Uh, yeah, I was going to mention uh, about ammo I'm shooting. Yeah, we're trying to be uh, smart about ammo too, and uh, I put in an order just uh, this this week to Federal for some things. I said. Just want to stay in the pipeline with the things I know we're going to need, and uh, get that in the works. You know, so when you're making that or building building that ammo, I think they call it, you know, uh, set a little aside for us and that kind of thing. Try, to, but I've always done that, and uh, my own supplies, I've said, and it, and with the federal too, and just uh, trying to stay ahead and thinking down the road and. And uh, you know, but then not wasting it. Uh, but that's what we do. We we shoot for a living, and uh, we shoot for you. If you don't have any ammo, right? <laughs> it's uh, so don't hate me because I've got a little ammo. Please just just enjoy it. I'll take a few shots for you. I'll take a few shots for you. Uh, it's it's a. Uh, I'm I'm fortunate uh, as I confess to you all. I thoroughly enjoy it. Like if I don't shoot this AK anymore today and I, I go back and clean it real well, which I probably will. I, I shot it yesterday a few shots and whatever I shot today, that's enough. I don't have to load up another full magazine and go through blast through 30 rounds to feel like I shot the AK. All right, just thoroughly enjoy it. I thoroughly enjoy taking it apart and cleaning it, you know? And uh, I've got a call and it's from, oh, somebody by the name of Potential spam. Anybody know him? <laughs> I get a few of those. I don't, uh, as you might guess, whether it's my home, actually I have a home phone, landline. I, it, it, answer machine is the only thing anybody ever communicates with there uh, uh, because I don't answer any phone call that I don't have in my phone, don't know who it is. Uh, and I, and again, I, you know, I, I, I just love you guys for watching and uh, helping us to do this supporting us uh, but the, the numbers you know make it so impossible to do a lot of things that we get requested to do you know come shoot or whatever it is meet you talk to you call back and all that sort of thing there are people who find phone number I guess well I know and I guess I, occasionally I'll play some messages and there's a couple of viewers from somewhere in the country you know wanting to send something uh, uh, somebody manufacture something or come shoot whatever it is and obviously we can't do that you know so don't don't really waste your time trying to find my phone numbers because we just don't answer them uh so it's not because we don't love you okay um it's just a, a thing about numbers the same with facebook i try try to scan through that they have changed that in the last speaking of that in the last couple of days a few days and I, I almost can't find messages, really. I think I figured out how to get to them under this new format. And something you all can't appreciate maybe is that uh, most of you, the, the Hickok 45 is a public page, right? And we set that up a long time ago. So we don't, we can't, you, know, you just follow or you don't. I guess it's like, more like Instagram. You, you just follow if you want. And uh, you know, three quarters of a million people do, I guess, close to it. But, I, I don't, I don't know anybody that that's following really hardly, and so it's, it'd be, it'd be crazy. You know, the reason for the public page is so you're basically saying anybody who wants to follow, be a friend, quote unquote, or follow us, can do it. You know, I don't have to approve it. But what if I had to approve all those people? You know, and always be going through. I don't know them. There's Bill Smith in Arkansas. Well, should I approve him? I don't know. Sounds like he's okay. <laughs> you know, I don't know anybody anyway. So that's what the public page is for. Just so place where we could post and anybody wants to follow can so join in uh, but, but so that too though is different and then you have to have a a page set up uh, and I think it's wild Bill Hickok or something in order to even have a public page and so you got two layers there and I don't even pay, I never even pay any attention to the wild Bill Hickok part of it it's just I just had to do that uh, I think you can actually send private messages to that kind of thing like you, you can on the Hickok 45. But, and ain't even request to be friends because it's more like a normal page. But I pay, so you know, I pay no attention to that. I just go to the Hickok 45. I can be the same thing, you know, see. Uh, 
I can't decide whether to approve somebody for a friend or whatever. So Hickok 45 is just, just kind of a public, it is a public public page. But that on top of the other, it's, it's hard to figure it out. And now you can you can check your Instagram messages along with it. And, and it seems like you get all the stupid stuff on Instagram because I, I don't check messages there. Uh, you have all the, the spam stuff, and so that's dumped in too. If you're not careful, you don't use the right settings. So anyway, I try to get in there and get just the actual messages and then at least scan those, okay? But uh, too many to really answer many. So, so don't be offended, please. It's not because I hate you, it's because there are just a couple of you out there, okay? I'm sorry. Uh, I don't have a secretary, you know, to do that. So, you know, in some ways, I told John, it'd be easier for people who are real celebrities. You know, really, uh, to where you maybe have a staff of people, you know, like, like in Hollywood or something, you know, a movie star, they've got an office with people stuffing pictures and replying to uh, people that, that want something or whatever, you know? And, you know, they probably got a copied signature of them, whoever it is, George Clooney or something. And so you got people handle all that, and so you might get a reply from them, you know, or somebody. Yeah, so it's just that this I'm just one person, and and so it's just it's kind of a weird place, really, to, to be in that regard. But I love it. I'm not complaining. Uh, it's great again to be able to do this and and shoot and uh, share all these firearms with you and uh, share my addiction. I've had the addiction a long time, just like many of you. Uh, since, I don't know, what about that? What do y'all think, uh, you people who are real gun nuts like me? I probably started when I was 10, playing cowboys and Indians and army and all that stuff, all the toy guns. And, uh, and then uh, it's just there are certain times in your life when you cannot pursue your addiction as much. Like when I was in high school playing basketball and then in college, basketball and studies dominate your life, don't have any money anyway. And uh, so, you know, it wasn't until I started getting towards the end of that that I bought that Blackhawk. You know, so that showed my addiction was there and the first chance I got, I bought that 45 Colt Blackhawk uh, Ruger. <laughs> and, uh, that we did a video on recently. Check it out if you haven't seen it. And uh, so then it was off to the races when I got out of college. You know, I wasn't rich or anything, but I went about acquiring a couple of more firearms and getting into reloading and all that kind of thing. So, so I've had the addiction for a long, long time. And uh, many of you have too. So it starts early, nothing you can do about it much. It's like one of those diseases that there's no cure for. You can't get rid of it. Uh, and who'd want to, right? Even though the trolls hate me. Yeah, they're, they're the anti-gunners. You'll see occasionally uh, people just, uh, there, there were several this week I noticed, just people, they make the most uh, insulting comments about, not just me, but about uh, gun owners, people that like, like, like me, like you. They just, they just hate us. They really do. Uh, as has been pointed out lots of times, uh, the anti-gunners, uh, many of them, a lot of them have a, what they think is a legitimate argument, of course, and they're fairly sensible people, but a lot of them are not. They're not sensible at all. They're just emotion-driven, uh, shallow thinkers, and they don't like us. It's not just the guns. They don't like the people who have guns. And I think we're finding out more and more, part of it is it's difficult to, to be a totalitarian, a dictator, and run other people's lives if they have the means to defend themselves, if it comes down to it. You know, that's part of it, I think. I think we're learning more and more that there are a lot of people in this country that really want to uh, determine what's best for you and me and run our lives. They really do. I, I didn't realize that until recent years that uh, that was such an issue. It really is. So I'll leave you with this. That makes it all the more important to vote. Okay. Uh, think about it. Again, I 
talk about it every week and it's coming up on time to do that and many of you are already voting uh, vote for the good of the country and uh, and freedom please try to avoid uh, one thing I've not talked about much is is we get caught up locally with a representative that we've met at a dinner party or something or an auction and they're just so friendly and they helped your brother-in-law uh, fix some problem he had with a property uh, disagreement or something and so he just thinks the world of, of her or him, that politician or whatever it might be. But just bear in mind, it has really gotten to the point where most the politicians are gonna vote as a block, it looks like. So whatever you stand for, keep that in mind. Just because a politician is very friendly and you've met him or her before, they're pretty, handsome or whatever it might be, you heard them speak a couple of times or whatever it might be uh or you used to like them a lot your dad likes them your mom likes them <coughs> uh shouldn't have had that cigar before i started uh, you know just just think about how they're going to vote on issues and how those issues are going to affect you okay or the freedom okay the constitution you know think about all those things and uh yeah before you push the button Pull the lever, okay? Uh, so uh, make sure you do that. It's really our only hope. If you're not voting, you know what I don't know what you're thinking about. You're, you're letting other people that determine your life. The same old deal. It's a lot easier to just criticize everybody, and it kind of you think at least it gets you off the hook. You know, if I if I make the statement often enough that hey, voting doesn't help, voting makes no difference. You know, they're all crooks. Or I vote, it does no good, or whatever. You're, you're, uh, you're just taking the easy way out. Okay. Yep. They knew I was recording. There they are. I'm unarmed. I'm unarmed. Guns are unloaded. <laughs> that was. Uh, that looked like the maybe the Vanderbilt uh, uh, helicopter, not the Fort Campbell. So uh, it'd be good, you know, if uh, I had an accident here, they're flying over every now and then. I could just holler up to them. So anyway, uh, vote and uh, be a good person. Be responsible, okay? Be responsible. If you're young, especially, think about these things and look at the world. Uh, I really, again, think these Supreme Court hearings and things like that, they're very good windows into uh, you know, the workings, of course, of Washington, the workings of the political mind. And I think even a young person, you could be 12 years old and it, it, it'd be hard to make you watch, right, all those hearings. <laughs> but I think even a young and inexperienced person, you would begin to get a, a feeling, I think, for who seems to be making sense or not. I've always said, uh, Someone could come down if there's another planet, like an Earth too, but it's different. The people are kind of the same, but it's totally, totally different. Uh, they have totally different politics or whatever. If they could come down to this planet and just hear our politicians talk, I think they could almost vote based on vote. I think uh, they could cast a smart, pretty smart ballot, <laughs> not knowing anybody or even how the whole system works by just listening and observing politicians, you know, both parties or from whatever parties, the way they talk and what they're trying to accomplish and agendas and how sincere they seem, how believable they seem, how credible they are. Uh, it's, it's pretty clear to me and I wish it were more clear to other people and I don't understand why it's not, <laughs> let's put it that way. It's just so slap you in the face clear to me yeah but everybody says that no matter what party you uh, favor right uh but so much that's anyway that's why you got to study for yourself and try not to be influenced by other people including me and really if you're young even, even your, your parents are like everybody else and your uncle charlie and aunt sue they're like everybody else they've you know they got tied into one party or some way of thinking a long time ago. They're just like everyone else. It's hard to, for them to change. 
or to see the light. You know, if there is a light to be seen, they're like anybody else. It's not really an intelligence issue. You have some really intelligent people on all sides of the political spectrum in terms of raw intelligence, okay? Uh, so it's, it's just a perspective, you know, and, and agenda and those kinds of things. So anyway, as I say, I, I vote on the side of freedom every time and uh, individual liberty, uh, regardless of what you call your party and what you look like, what color you are, what gender you are, where you come from as a politician, and none of that matters to me. It's, it's what you think, how you uh, regard individual freedom and that sort of thing, the Bill of Rights. You know, so anyway, enough on that. Uh, I'm gonna shoot some more, maybe. I, I gotta shoot the AK a couple more times and before it rains on me, I think it's gonna try. And then I'm gonna clean, do some gun clean, okay? So good to see you all. I really appreciate you coming by and uh, just, just have a good week if you can. Uh, I know we're still in this ammo shortage, but I just have a feeling you have guns that need cleaning and you should probably do that. If you don't have any ammo to shoot in them and make them dirty, what could you do? I know you could go outside safely somewhere, make sure it's unloaded. If you don't have any ammo, it's probably unloaded, right? And, <laughs> and accidentally, on purpose, drop it in the dirt. Yeah, for the sand pile, okay? Then guess what? You gotta take that thing apart and clean it. It'll give you an excuse to do that, right? I shouldn't be advising you to drop a firearm, should I? That, that didn't sound good. But somehow, get it dirty uh, uh, accidentally so you'll have to clean it, okay? You might be surprised. I tell you, it's also a good time if you're not shooting a lot or don't have ammo or money to buy, whatever, whatever. It's a good time to, gosh, everything is online. There's, there's, there's idiots like me and there's people who actually know things. You can, uh, and there's lots of good books. You, I bet you a lot of you have a firearm that you've not, uh, you've, you field stripped it and you've cleaned it, but you've not taken it apart any further. Again, be careful. Uh, but there may be a next level on things like, like uh, taking the slide apart on a Glock or a 1911, you know, that sort of thing I'm talking about. I'm not talking about be getting into gunsmithing uh, territory, but uh, like a, a slide, uh, take that thing apart and clean it really well put it back together. For all you know, in your carry gun, and I've talked about this before in a cleaning video, I think, in a Glock or whatever, you could have some some uh, little pieces of brass in there or grit or dirt, and maybe it's piled up in there for a few years if you shoot that firing very much, that's just getting ready to block your firing pin or your striker, okay, with just a little bit more, or a little lube gets in there or something, you know. Uh, and that's your carry gun. It's your defensive pistol you keep at the house or whatever. So there might be some firearms like that. I try to remember to do that every now and then uh, and just you know, go that, that next level. Not the gunsmithing level, but just uh, and, and then just learn more about it. So I'll shut up. I've talked too long and I really appreciate you coming by. And I know there's lots of ways you could spend Sunday. But, uh, you know, you don't want to waste it watching football. You want to watch some big ugly guy talk about firearms, right? So have a good week, and I'll talk to you next week, I hope. Life is good.